The SC-5A was important as it laid the foundations for the modern Air Force and it was our first fighter and I think it's worth remembering that. When the Royal Australian Air Force was formed on the 31st of March 1921, it had just three operational fighter aircraft. Painted silver, most of the First World War surplus SE-5As were part of Britain's imperial gift, 100 aircraft donated to Australia to help establish an Air Force. 32 more SE-5As sat in packing crates. Most were flying by 1926, but 14 would never be assembled and 10 were lost in crashes. During the First World War, two squadron, Australian Flying Corps, flew the SE-5A in combat over the trenches of the Western Front, producing 16 aces. Six squadron flew them for training in England. The other fighter squadron on the front, number four, flew the Sopwith Camel, a more difficult aircraft to master. The Camel had a rotary engine and that meant that the cylinders were attached to the propeller. Whilst it was easy to fly it as turning in one direction, it was quite an effort to go the other. SC-5A on the other hand had an inline engine and it was much more stable than flight, so consequently the more inexperienced pilots could easily become more experienced and survive in an SC-5A. The Scout Experimental 5 first flew in 1916. It was equipped with two machine guns and could carry four 25-pound bombs. Two of the prototypes crashed as a result of weakness in the wing design. But the revised model, the SE-5A, was a tough, reliable machine. Powered by a water-cooled 200 horsepower V8 engine, the SE-5A was a fast and stable gun platform. The Vickers machine gun fired through the propeller arc and the Lewis gun, attached to a Foster mount, could be tilted up to fire on an aircraft from below. With a top speed of over 200 kilometres per hour, it was one of the fastest aircraft of the war. It was also the first aircraft with an elevator trim wheel allowing it to be flown hands off. After the war, the SE-5A became the Royal Australian Air Force's first advanced fighter trainer, and by 1925, it was fully integrated into two squadrons of combined aircraft, which also included DH-9 and DH-9A bombers. But its days were numbered. Wartime aircraft weren't designed to last. Aircraft would come back damaged. Often the undercarriage would break on landing. Sometimes the aircraft would tip over on its nose. Propellers would break. And they were just replaced. Airworthiness was something which was only in the dim future. And consequently, a lot of those aircraft really only lasted a few months. One of the most notable crashes was at the opening of Parliament House in 1927. As His Excellency opened Parliament House, over flew the first wave of aircraft and then a section of SC-5As flew over. And just as they got past the dais, one of them peeled off and crashed 600 metres long of the assembled crowd. Today, there are only six original SE-5As left in the world. RAF A24 hangs in the Australian War Memorial, repainted in the wartime colours of Number 2 Squadron, Australian Flying Corps. So we went from the SE-5A to the Bristol Bulldog to the Hawker Demon and then eventually to Spitfires and Hurricanes. 